Welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. Are you ready for something magical? Today you're going to learn my five steps to ethereal painting. We'll start by sketching with a marker. I'll tell you why I love this approach. We'll be using other mediums to create drama and excitement in your work. Also, we're going to play with textures. This is so fun. I think you're going to love it. And if you know me, of course, I'll be playing with color. And of course, I'll be adding soft pastels for a final and vibrant layer. And I'll be using these mediums and techniques to teach you my ethereal style of painting. Let's get started. I found an image of a lion that I loved from unsplash.com, a great site for copyright free reference images. I did some photo altering to it. And if you are a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will receive my altered images. But if you are here on the Monet Cafe channel, you'll get a link to the original image in the description of this video. Here's a list of my supplies, but keep in mind they'll also be in the description of this video, and I will mention them as they appear in the lesson. I used color fix pastel paper, charcoal pencils, Tombow markers, some acrylic ink, a couple of brushes, a thin brush and a thick brush, some gouache paint. I used a couple of organic stencils and various soft pastels. The surface I'm using is one that's pretty affordable for a soft pastel surface. It's Art Spectrum Color Fix Pastel Paper. It comes in various colors, and what I love about it is it is water friendly. You can use various other mediums. Also, if you buy a single sheet, it's not that much. It's about $4 for a single 9 by 12 sheet, but I have this rainbow pack. It has 20 sheets of various colors. I really love just the variety of being able to choose different colors. And the color I chose, it's kind of a gray blue color. But as I always say, use what you have and all of these products will be in the description of this video. I got inspired before starting this painting by an artist I love. I have followed her for years. Her name's Kimberly Kelly Santini. She has an absolutely beautiful, ethereal, and organic style. I love how she creates her animal paintings in a way where she incorporates elements of nature within the painting. And she's not an artist that is bound by what she sees in her reference image, but she has the freedom of going outside the lines, so to speak, literally and figuratively. And she also is not afraid of color. And even in these, these are kind of monochromatic, but she is just magical in her technique. I particularly like this one or these Fox paintings. I love her Fox series, but this one of the little raccoon, I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see, she has, just some beautiful floral elements involved or integrated, and I'm just inspired by her work. I really love the element of line and linear mark making that uh, Kimberly has in her paintings, and I've been using this technique for a little while now of creating a sketch or an underpainting with a marker. I have multiple reasons for that, and I'll explain in a minute, but first let me tell you about these. They're Tombow markers. These are Tombow grayscale markers. There's 10 of them. I like that they have two ends. Well, of course they have two ends, but they have a fine tip and a brush pen, and I'm using the fine tip uh, end right now. And this first step is one I'm calling linear and expressive mark making. I feel this can set a foundation for just some excitement and movement and some general lines. We're not trying to get in everything with respect to our subject matter, just the lines that have energy and motion and excitement. And you can probably see that light charcoal sketch that I did in charcoal pencil underneath. That was just to get the basic form of the lion. So I didn't have to think when I went to uh, get the marker down. And I'm using the marker because it is not going to bleed when I add the wet media. I'm gonna be adding some other um, mediums that are liquid. And if I just had the charcoal pencil down, it would just bleed and I would lose it. It would kind of uh, get rid of it. So I found that this marker technique works great. And once I get a few of these gestural lines and I'm actually just using a kneaded eraser to erase most of the charcoal. And by the way, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will get a copy of this sketch.
Now the first wet media that I'll be using is some acrylic ink. I'm sorry, it's a little out of focus there. I'm using only the one color actually, this purple lake that's in front. It's a really dark purple. I love using this product with pastel paintings. It's really a great way to get down initial values. I'm using a brush. This happens to be a Winsor Newton, uh, kind of a nice brush. It's a sable brush. You could use any brush you have with a fine tip and of course some water and a container. Now I'm just gonna put a few drops of my Purple Lake into my little dish and then I'm ready to paint. And now for step number two, which I'm calling a combination or a variety of mark making techniques. I'm doing a combination of some fine gestural, um, just linear marks, and also changing my strokes often and my widths often to something more broad and large and expressive. Now let me go into more detail about this process. I first began with the smaller, more fine tip brush with the Purple Lake, and I just started outlining the subject. And it was definitely the eyes and the nose, uh, those distinguished features of a lion. Notice I didn't try to draw with charcoal or with the marker every piece of his fur. I just wanted to create some drama with an exciting, um, sketchy mark making technique. Once I got in the eyes, nose, and mouth, I switched to a larger brush because I wanted to give that wild and free feeling of his mane. And what I'm doing here is just kind of looking at the image and seeing where some of the darker to middle values are. And I'm making my brush strokes in very dynamic and directional strokes, keeping my strokes very loose and just following the form and direction of how his mane is coming out from his face. And now I'll be switching back to the small brush. Remember that painting I showed you of Kimberly Santini's where she had some of the outline marks? So I got my small brush again, and I just looked at some areas where I might can make some marks that gave that feeling of energy and life and followed perhaps where his whiskers are, where some of the mane was extending out. And this is kind of intuitive, um, and that's really a good word, a good way to describe this type of painting. It's intuitive and free, and I think it's really a lot of fun. And every so often, you know, if you followed my channel along, I do paintings that are impressionistic and um, not quite as uh, interpretive and intuitive as this, but I do love the style of painting. So this is just me getting in some more marks that I thought added drama to this painting. I'm going to add a couple more colors before I get to the soft pastel. And I decided to use a product, one of my patrons mentioned this actually, it's called acrylic gouache. And I have this product, it's called Turner Acryl Gouache but you could use other products for this part of the painting. I like acrylic gouache or gouache in general because it's an opaque medium and you can control its opacity by how much water you add. So I'll be adding a decent amount of water and I'm mixing up some colors. Mostly I used uh, this ochre color and kind of a peachy color and I lightened it with white. Now for step number three that I'm calling adding a variety of textures. And yes, this is a stencil. I had so much fun just playing with this uh, style of ethereal or organic painting. And if you noticed in, or if you do notice in Kimberly's paintings, she has almost a stenciling type of technique. I wonder if she really uses stencils um, to incorporate in her work. So it's very textural. And my board kept moving on me. It would really be better to do this laying it flat. I grabbed a brush again just to get some of that lighter uh, value underneath his eye and in his muzzle there a little bit. Now I'm going to get uh, some blue to add to this, kind of a turquoisey blue. And I looked through the colors and I decided to combine two of these. One was a cobalt blue and the other was an aqua blue. And I'm calling this next step expression or freedom of color. In artwork, we do not have to stay bound by whatever we see. We can really get expressive with color. And I believe these types of 
ethereal paintings are very expressive with color. Don't be afraid to break out your artistic license and have fun. And by the way, this gray paper that you're seeing, I love it. It's called a Gray Matters uh, pad. It's actually just like a little palette. It's really great to have a gray surface to mix colors on because it's a really neutral surface. It's way better than trying to mix colors on white. And I'm adding this combination of blues to areas that seem to have middle values. And they're kind of a, a shadowy underpainting of sorts prior to adding some more of the maybe traditional lion colors on top with soft pastel. And I really liked this color. And also uh, with gouache, as I'm applying it here, I have it, I would say the consistency of not mustard, that would be too thick. Maybe not quite milk, that would be too thin. Uh, let me think of something, maybe like uh, olive oil. That's probably uh, kind of how I have um, the thickness of it. And it causes it to still be somewhat transparent. You see how you can see through it? So my point is I don't want you to, if you try the gouache, don't apply it so thickly. I still want this to be nice and transparent. That's what I really love about Kimberly's paintings. They are so soft and translucent. And um, I really love that style. And I'm staying very loose and free with gestural mark making, just like I did when using the acrylic ink. Um, and another great thing about using these types of products with soft pastel painting, the acrylic ink, the gouache, or if you used watercolor, you're not taking up any of the tooth or the sanded part of the surface, which pastels cling to, soft pastels. So you're really almost like starting from fresh with soft pastels once you use these types of products to begin. All right, time for more fun. I had this other stencil. It looked kind of like a, a barren tree. So... I decided let's add some warmth to this. So I got an ochre and kind of an earthy green and I just, I added a little bit more of this bright yellow. I wanted to lighten it up a bit. So I kept mixing until I got a consistency that was a little bit of a lighter mossy green. And because my board kept moving every time I was pressing this, I decided to put some tape on it. And um, I was gonna try to hold my board, but I, I didn't do very well at that. So as you can see, a lot of this was experimentation for me. And if you do this, it might be better for this process to lay your board flat on a surface so that you can press harder and get the uh, parts of the stencil to show up a little bit better. But again, this is supposed to be loose and free and a bit mystical. So it's actually okay if some of these don't come out so perfect. Uh, often I think we try to make our work too perfect and it comes out as very stiff. So just have fun with this and play with it. And I must say, I had a lot of fun with this painting. Sometimes, you know, I teach a lot obviously and I make a lot of videos and sometimes it's fun for me just to play like this. All right, I'm almost done playing with these stencils and now it's time to add soft pastel. And I'm speeding up the pastel portion a bit so you can see this lion come to life. And I'm using various soft pastels. I just had kind of a, um, a collection of pastels in front of me from previous paintings. And again, I was just being spontaneous with this painting. And I wanted to get this video to you guys. I actually had finished this painting last week, but I got a little sick. If you're a patron of mine, you guys know I was a little under the weather. I think it's a flu or something. But I can tell I'm on the mend, which is a good thing because I have another painting I want to share with our furry friends theme this month before the month of April is through. All right, so you can see the beauty of soft pastels. I do love so many mediums, but there's really just something about the soft pastel medium. It is so earthy and it's so unique that you get to hold these sticks of color in your hand. You are in direct contact with the color and the surface you're painting on. And I don't know, there's just something very organic about that for me. And pastels really are some of the most vibrant in color of any medium. I think they are the most vibrant of color in any medium. And uh, let me explain why in case you're new to soft pastels. Many paints in their different forms have to have a binder, um, something to um, uh, 
adhere them to the color. Uh, say, for example, acrylic has to have a binder. It's not just pure color. It has to have some sort of a liquid binder. Same with oil, same with watercolor. And the same is true for pastels to a degree, but the most quality soft pastels are almost 100% pure color. They have very little binder. And that's why there are certain brands of pastels that lend themselves to being very soft and incredibly vibrant. And while they are an opaque medium, uh, meaning if you press really hard with soft pastels, you won't really be able to see through it. Um, they're not necessarily totally opaque because you can control the pressure of how hard um, you press with the soft pastel, which will give you more of a translucent feel. You can see how the uh, paper, the underpainting is showing through. Um, now I did add some blue, you notice above the eyes, uh, his eyes look a little weird right now. I start to develop that later. And a little blue right there on his mouth. There is, look for those subtle areas of the image where you see some shadows. And almost always, one day I'm going to do a people uh, portrait uh, month, but almost always underneath the lid of the eye is a little bit of a shadow because the light is usually from above and you get just a little bit of a shadow, usually kind of a bluish um, or a grayish uh, middle value will work just fine. So this is, I wanted the eyes to really stand out. So I got the the pastel we many pastel artists love for a good dark is called the eggplant color by terry ludwig pastels it's a dark dark purple it appears as black but it's really if you add water to it by the way you can add water to soft pastels i do it all the time you can lay down some pastel get some water and turn it into a wash like an underpainting um, but if you did that with this eggplant color you would see for sure that it's definitely a beautiful dark purple um, so this is just giving some drama making his eyes stand out and now I'm going to work on these eyes a little bit more. You notice I put a little green there in the corner of his eyes and a little blue. Really, it doesn't matter the color as long as you get the value right. There's a little bit more of that blue for the shadow of his eyes. And I noticed the pupils of his eyes weren't as black or as dark as the outline of his eyes. Also, the gold I had put down before, I needed it to be a little bit darker. His eyes are still a little bit in shadow. And here's where I'm adding a little bit of that medium darker value blue. And this is one thing you wanna get right, is the eyes, the shape of the eyes and just the direction of the pupils. If you get that off, it just really, it shows so easily when you have um, something in the eye that's a little bit off. It reads very quickly. You can read something's off. Everybody can catch it, even if you're not an artist. I had a little highlight. You can see that golden color, a little bit more purples and a magenta color. I'm just having fun here with color and uh, even a little more green. I hope you can already see how the variations of mark making, linear strokes, textures, and color have really begun to have that ethereal style. Dreamy is another good word for it. The remainder of this lesson with my full commentary is only available on my Patreon page, but I'm gonna speed this up here on the Monet Cafe channel and share with you step number five. Let me take a quick little station break before I do though. I would love it if you would go ahead and like this video if you like it. Also, leave me a comment, subscribe. I love to hear from you and it really does help YouTube share this video more often. Also, if you'd like to get that extra content I'm always talking about and become part of my Patreon family, it's real easy. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time, but the best part is you become part of a group of artists that are just so beautiful. Learning together, I get to see your work. It really is a beautiful family. And for step number five, it's called interesting elements. And it's kind of a culmination of what you've seen me doing throughout this whole process is not being afraid to introduce elements and textures and actually objects that aren't necessarily something you would uh, think of or imagine in a painting or image of a lion. You know, we think of trees and we think of grasses and fur, but we can actually add in organic elements, of course. We could add in geometric elements, and it's just really a chance to have a lot of freedom and creativity and individuality. And I used the word dreamy before, and that's kind of what I 
think is a great adjective for this type of painting. When you think of a dream, it's usually a lot of elements that almost don't make sense, but instead is something that breaks the restraints of this world and crosses over into something that's a bit more spiritual. That's, that's another good adjective. And now I'm getting really crazy and fun with mark making. All right, here is the final. I hope you will let me know if these five tips or techniques for creating art with a more ethereal style is helpful for you. And I decided to call this piece, Thy Kingdom Come. I love the verse in the book of Matthew that says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I hope you learned a lot, everyone. As always, become a patron if you like. Please subscribe, check out more videos, and as always, God bless and happy painting.